Hey Suraj, today what we are getting to know about Aprilia? Today we are going to talk about the good things about RS457, things that I like on this bike. In the previous video, I spoke about things that I don't like on the RS457. This video is going to be about all the positive aspects of the RS457. And should you be buying this bike, if you are planning to buy it or you have booked it already, then this video is for you, where I will talk about all the good things about RS457. So let's get started with the video. The first thing that I like about the RS457 is its engine. So the engine is a 457cc which produces 48 bhp of power and 43.5 newton meters of torque. More than these numbers, what is important is the way the torque is generated on this bike. So all the 43.5 newton meters of torque comes in at just 6500 rpm. And when you compare it with the segment like the Ninja 300, Ninja 400 or the Yamaha R3, in all those bikes, the torque comes at, uh, at higher in the rev band. So the difference that it makes is when whenever you are riding it in the city and you are at, at around 3000 or 4000 RPM in third or fourth gear, you need not wait for the bike to produce that torque. You just give the accelerator and the bike accelerates. That's the character of this engine. So when you compare it with a single cylinder engine, single cylinder engines come, have a lot of torque in the uh, mid range. This bike also has a lot of torque in the mid range. It has a lot of torque higher in the rev band. And when it comes to the lower rev band, that is less than 4000 RPM also, it accelerates very well. So the issue with single cylinder motorcycles is that in the lower rev band, that is less than 4000 RPM, it struggles a lot. So once it crosses 4000 RPM, that's the when the bike gets going. But in parallel twin engines, you can uh, be at 2000 or 3000 RPM and the torque delivery is there. The bike will not hesitate. Now, when I compare to the Ninja 300 and 400 or the Yamaha R3, in the scenarios where you are less than 4000 RPM, even those bikes will pick low in the, in the higher gears and the lower rev band. But the difference RS457 makes is that it has a lot of torque over there as well. So in the Ninja 300 and 400, you will have to accelerate, put, push it up to 6000 or 7000 RPM only then the bike starts to accelerate and you'll be able to enjoy the bike. And not every time in the city you can go higher in the rev band. And that's where the RS457 shines a lot. When it comes to the higher rev band torque, that is when you are taking it to the track or you are uh, enjoying on a weekend ride, even in the higher rev band, it has an ample amount of torque to keep you excited. So it will, it, it has an absolutely beautiful engine in terms of power and torque delivery when you compare it with the segment. This bike's engine kills all the other bikes in this segment when it comes to performance. And when I talk about the performance, no, it's not about the top speed. By, by top speed, you cannot judge the performance of an engine. It's the way how the bike accelerates. What's the torque delivery it has in the various rev bands. So that's where the RS457 shines. If you want to see the acceleration and the top speed video, you can watch the short video that I have made. It, it is appearing on the I button on the top left corner over here. Next thing I want to talk about is the weight of RS457. The curve weight of RS457 is just at 175 kgs. By curve weight, I mean to say when the engine oil is present in the bike and the tank is completely filled with fuel. And that is when it just weighs at 175 kgs. The advantage with a low weight bike is that the torque and the power delivery feels more lively in the bike. If the bike has a lot of weight, then it will not be able to do justice to the power and the torque delivery. And the weight management on this bike is very good. If I have to take this bike off the stand, I need not hold the handle. I just need to lift it like this and the bike lifts. That's the weight management on RS457. And when you are riding it, you will not feel any weight. That adds to the handling characteristic of this bike. So that was the second advantage about RS457. The next thing that I like about the RS457 is its 41mm USD front forks. So these USD front forks are preload adjustable, but I have been riding it for the last 2000 kilometers and I did not feel any need of changing the preload settings because it was performing very good on the highways when I was taking extreme corners at higher speeds and when whenever I used to brake hard, the suspension was behaving the way it should. And I don't feel there is any need to change the suspension or modify the settings on this bike. But there is an adjustability option. If you want to play around to see how it performs at different settings, you can do that. But I did not face any issues with respect to the suspension in the stock setting and it performs beautifully. Next thing I want to talk about is the tires on the RS457. So in stock condition, it gets the Eurogrip Pro Torque Extreme. 
and these are 150 section tires which are specially made for the rs457 you will not get these tires on any other bike or in the market in the last 2000 kilometers i have been riding this bike i rode it onto the highways and well as well as i rode it in the city i did take extreme corners i rode it up to 194 kilometers an hour and i did not face any issues with it even when i was taking extreme corners the bike was having that confidence the tire was backing me up so that i could do those corners on the highways i'm not sure how it will perform on the race track but for the city use highway use and weekend rides the tvs pro talk extreme on this bike does a good job and it is a plus point for me now let me talk about the design of the rs457 i really like the the way how aprilia has designed the rs457 it looks gorgeous whenever you are riding in the city it is a head turner people will look at this bike they will inquire about it like what is this bike about because this is new in the market as well as it looks like a sub 600 cc bike if, when you look at the design it is almost comparable to the rs660 if someone does not know about rs457 and they have a look at this and they, do, they don't see the rs457 badge they can easily get mistaken about it being a 660 but actually it is a 457 so design on the rs457 it is the best when you compare it with the segment like the ninja 400 or the yamaha r3 or the ninja 500 for the matter of fact this bike has the best design in this segment next thing that i like about the rs457 is its chassis so rs457 uses a dual beam aluminium frame so this is the same frame that is being used in the rs660 and the handling of this bike goes to another level with this chassis no other bike in this segment has this kind of a chassis and since i have been riding it on the highways i have been taking aggressive corners the difference in handling because of the chassis it it is a different experience on the rs457 you will have to ride this bike really hard in order to believe how the chassis performs on the rs457 you need not put any efforts to pitch it into the corners you just give the direction and the bike will pitch in that is the level of confidence you will have while riding the rs457 all thanks to this aluminium frame next thing i like about the rs457 is its build quality so the build quality on the rs457 is very good you will not find any panel gaps the quality of the paint and the plastics is very good there is no rattling noise no matter how hard you are taking it on the rough patch of road you will not see any part rattling the fit and finish the build quality it feels premium it will give you a feel of a super bike if you are looking this bike in person that's the level of the quality that aprilia has maintained with the rs457 and it is not made in italy it's made in india but designed by aprilia so it's a very good thing to have this bike manufactured here in india which has such great build quality next thing that i like about the rs457 is the amount of feature it gets so it gets three riding modes that is rain sports and the eco mode the power delivery on these three all these three modes is same it's just the way how the throttle management changes with each of the power modes it also gets three levels of traction control and i have tested the traction control at level one level two and level three so level three is the most intrusive one but level two is medium intrusive and level one is very less intrusive when i tested the traction control on rs457 i found that the intervention of traction control is not at all abruptive it is a very smooth way of intervening you will not feel any power lag it will intervene at the point where the tire tends to slip the calibration of the traction control is very good on the rs457 you will have to ride this bike on the dirt in order to see how the traction control performs and i am absolutely impressed with the way the traction control performs on the rs457 though you do not need traction control while riding it on the road because it just has 48 bhp of power but when you have loose gravel surfaces that's when the traction control comes in really handy and it plays its role next i want to talk about the tft console on the rs457 so rs457 gets a color tft console which has a lot of inbuilt features in it quality of the screen is very good you you will not have any issues with the quality of the screen it also gets a uh, lap timer if you decide to take it on the racetrack to do some lap times it can record even that it has bluetooth connectivity for phone music and gps navigation if you want to know more about the uh, for bluetooth connectivity you can watch the uh, video which i have shot and that is appearing on the icard button right now so that was about the tft console which i really like on the rs457 
not many people focus on the grab handle of the rs457 but the, this is really handy for me because if i want to hold the bike from the back there is a grab handle which is a solid metal piece and i if i want to change the direction of the rear tire i can just grab hold of this grab handle and i can pull the bike this option is not there on the ninja 400 or ninja 500 or yamaha r3s and ninja 300 gets a grab handle which is very awkward looking but this grab handle is very neatly integrated with the rear look of the bike so that is one thing which i like though on super sport bikes you don't need a grab handle but for day-to-day -day usage like me where, where i use it every day for my office commute this really comes in handy for me next thing i like about this bike is how light the clutch pull is so clutch pull on the rs457 is very light you will not feel any effort riding it in the city because whenever you are riding in the city you will have to modulate the clutch and uh, a lot when compared to riding it on the highway so the light pull of clutch is a very nice experience to operate in the city if you have a hard clutch your hand tends to pain but when i ride this bike in the city and after riding this bike i switch on to any other bike i immediately feel that the clutch is very hard so good job to aprilia for giving a light clutch because it has a slipper clutch as well and slipper whatever bike has a slipper clutch it usually has a light clutch pull but this bike has a very light clutch pull and that gets in the favor of the rs457 those are the things that i like about the rs457 and that is the reason why i went ahead and bought this bike and even if you are planning to buy this bike i hope this will video will help you a lot to decide on what things you like about this bike what things you did not like about this bike so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below hey wait 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 what about the ground clearance can you give us any idea about it i forgot to talk about the ground clearance so the ground clearance on this bike it is not at all a negative point so the ground clearance on the rs457 will not disappoint you it is a positive factor on this bike so i am going to make a dedicated video and that will be the upcoming video where i test it on the off-road i will test it on the higher speed breakers and all your questions with respect to ground clearance will be answered in the upcoming video till then keep subscribed to my channel hit that bell icon and share my videos and i will see you in the next video till then Bye-bye.